And then recently I joined the board of uh, Wild Networks, which is a company that has focused on IoT. And IoT is completely different, of course, from broadband. You don't at all have the same uh, bandwidth requirements. Here we are talking about sending a few bits, maybe messages of 10 bytes or 100 bytes uh, to give information about temperature, moisture, if there is a gas leak, if uh, some equipment is not working anymore that you have in a remote place. Yeah, lots of various use cases. And of course, in the cities, IoT has grown a lot and uh, it's an important part to connect IoT devices to 4G or 5G. But if there is no terrestrial coverage, how do you connect them? So since uh, the IoT requirements are so much less than for broadband, you can use much cheaper satellites. You can uh, use satellites that are small and easy to launch. And uh, Wild Connect then is a service to connect IoT devices and sensors anywhere in the world to give 100% coverage for IoT. So one of the big areas uh, is agriculture. We have signed a number of agreements already with uh, small and large companies working in this sector. Environment is becoming more and more important to keep track of what's happening in different areas. So a very small, uh, low-cost terminal, in, in this case, uh, actually working at uh, one of the ISM bands or two of the ISM bands below one gigahertz to keep costs really low. I mean, license bands have a lot of advantages, but they are more expensive. And uh, in rural areas, uh, these remote areas, interference should not be such a big problem. Many of these terminals also have a hybrid mode, so you can connect to a terrestrial network if it's available, and if it's not available, you connect to the satellite. And then you come to the ground station, and here you collect data. And with um, Wild's uh, collaboration with Utelsat, which is the third largest op uh, satellite operator in the world, uh, there will be a satellite over the uh, terminal at least once every hour. So that means you can send 12 messages per day, and that's more in, than enough for most of these applications. Maybe three or four messages is what you need. And some of these messages might be really, really important and uh, be very, very valuable. Of course, you could send this over a VSAT as well, a very small aperture terminal, but the cost of that terminal and also the cost of the capacity is very high. And if you want to have a lot of IoT devices, you have to have a lower cost solution. So I think this is also pointing out a direction for IoT for 6G. Uh, just let me finish with a couple of slides. Uh, yeah, this shows again so, some, some of the use cases. Um, they, they are similar to what you have in cities. Maybe agriculture is of course a bit different. And uh, there is a lot of money that could be saved. And also there is talk about having these sensors in agriculture could actually increase yield by three to five percent and therefore avoid uh, to, to, to have people starving in the in the future. So th this is just uh, in the startup, uh, but we have signed, as I said, contracts with some really big companies. Uh, the market for global satellite IoT is by Rethink Research estimated to grow to about 5.9 billion. Maybe not so much compared to many other telecom services, but for a small company in uh, the IoT world, it's a lot of money. So if we can take part of that, we'll be very happy. And I think uh, by 2030, when 6G is planned to be started, this will be much larger uh, figures. So thank you very much.